Hi everyone, I'm Maranke Harris. I'm the science manager on board the EV Nautilus. Anything that has to do with science samples or data management falls under my jurisdiction. And today I am happy to show you the wet lab, which is a space that many of you have not seen in detail yet. So follow along. All right, so welcome to the wet lab. This is where all our sample processing takes place. When the samples come up on ROV Hercules or on any other robot we might be using, what we do is we bring them in here and we begin the different stages of processing. So if it's a geological sample like a rock, we just let those dry on the counter. But with biological samples, what we do is we first bring them to the photo station and we take photos of them from all sorts of angles and then we subsample them. So we have the main sample, like this big hemichorallium coral that has been dried out. And pieces of that hemichorallium have to go to different institutions that we're working with. So you will have pieces that are preserved in ethanol jars, you'll have pieces that are preserved in formalin. Preservation style just depends on what they're being used for. A lot of the time they're being used for taxonomic analysis or genetic analysis, and that helps us understand species range extension and also um, new species as well. So it's pretty exciting stuff because we've only visually seen 0.001% of the deep sea, so there's a lot that we have to learn. And we also have our compound microscope. So this is used to take a closer look at some of the coral species that we bring up. You can see we have tiny little snips of multiple coral species. That's that hemichorallium again, the pink one. Um, and what we do is we have scientists that sit at this microscope and do preliminary taxonomic analysis based off of what they see at a magnified level. So that just helps with um, down the line processing, getting a head start on guessing what these samples might be or understanding more about how new they might be as well. And over here we have some of our geology samples. So these have been sliced open with the rock saw and you can see what's actually inside. This is the actual rock part. Everything around it is ferromanganese crust. And you can tell from the thickness of the ferromanganese crust that this is over 70 million years old. And that's because the crust accumulates over time. So a geologist could actually look at that and tell you almost the exact age. But as far as I know, over 70 million years. <laughs> In the wet lab, we use a lot of equipment. So all of that equipment is kept in separate drawers, nice and organized. You can see we have syringes, pipettes, petri dishes, and they have these latches because we are on a moving ship. So if any of these drawers are left unlatched, that won't be very good. <laughs> so everything on a moving ship has to stay in place, which is why we have latches on the drawers and why we have these non-skid mats on the lab benches as well. I'll show you some of the biology tools. And it might be interesting to <laughs> find what looks like a dinner spoon or a spatula in a wet laboratory, but these actually really help us get our samples off of ROV Hercules. If there's something that's really delicate that we need to scoop out, we can just use the dinner spoon and get to it instead of um, risking damaging it or breaking it by grabbing it with our hands. This is exciting. <laughs> This is where we talk to the control van. So even before the samples are brought up, we can be conversing with the control van while we get the wet lab ready and making sure that everything is in order. We're also on camera sometimes when we bring the samples up. If you come this way, another type of sampling that we do is eDNA sampling. So this is our trusty vacuum pump, and this is what we use to filter multiple liters of water and catch eDNA or environmental DNA on those filters. And that's really just any pieces of biological life that we get within the water. So it could be skin cells, it could be mucus, it could be feces. So we're able to tell what was in that area just based off of the DNA that we catch and analyze. You don't actually have to sample the organism or even see it to understand that it was there. It's kind of like detective work in the deep sea. Over here, we have our millipore water filter because sometimes we need water to be a special level of purity to be um, mixed with our samples for preservation or for us to make different types of chemical concentrations to preserve our samples as well. These are the bins that our samples are collected from um, when we bring them off of ROV Hercules. So when the ROV comes up, it's kind of like Christmas Day or all the scientists are gathered around the ROV with our bins and our clipboards ready to take all those samples off and begin the processing in the lab as I just showed you. Um, and then over here, 
We have our fume hood. So this is used for any chemicals that we don't want to be breathing in. We're using it for formalin sometimes, um, sometimes formaldehyde. Um, ethanol itself, like I showed you earlier, doesn't need to be done within the fume hood, but some of those more dangerous chemicals are handled over here. We have our safety equipment, our lab coats. There are also lab goggles that we use. And I mentioned samples being preserved. So after the samples are put into whatever jars or test tubes or bags they need to be put into, they're preserved one of two ways, or one of three ways. They can either be at room temperature on the lab bench, or they can be preserved in our fridges. So we have some coral samples in there, or they can be preserved in our freezer. And there's nothing in here right now because we also have a minus 80 freezer in another room. This one's just minus 20. So the DNA samples are usually kept at minus 80 so that we don't degrade any of the DNA and they can be further processed on land. Well, that's the wet lab. Thank you for joining me here today in this space. I hope you learned a lot about the equipment that we use, what it's used for, and why the science that we do is important. Be sure to follow along with our upcoming 2026 season and follow along on nautiluslive.org and also our social media accounts as well. And I will see you next time.